it's just pretty surprising how good this movie is, how good the music is. Um, even though there's a song, another song in here that it sounds like other songs. Like, I'll be listening to the radio and I'll think, oh, that sounds like a Spinal Tap song. <laughs> because they really are, like, no pun intended, tapping into what music is. Yeah. Like, what, what rock music sounds like. Um, and it's just really well done. Well, and then when I was in high school, while well, we were in high school, the uh, they had another, they had an album that came yeah. out. That's actually when I watched this movie, I think. Because I was, like, super into, like, metal or rock music. It really is not real metal. Like, yeah. I wasn't into, like, real super metal-y stuff. Okay. Um, but I was into, like, more what I, at this time I would call hard rock, like... Guns N' Roses at the time was kind of considered metal. Yeah. But I would consider them more just like hard rock. I Yeah, I think I would call Guns N' Roses hard rock. I For me, the way I got exposed to new music is a bunch of me and, and my nerdy friends would like hang out together. And what we would do is we would always get new music. And then we would just drive around in the car and oh, just listen fine. to the new material, <laughs> which was awesome. That's and, really fun. Oh, it was great. I mean, and sometimes, like, we would stay over at each other's house. And, like, you know, we would sneak out. And we would just do, like, the most tame stuff. Like, we'd go listen to music and, like, go to Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'd, like, go get some, like, donuts and coffee. <laughs> and listen to music. <laughs> listen to some just music. Just listen to, like, hardcore metal. Uh, yeah, well, we played, I mean, pretty much everything. That's... You know, with uh, with my friends, I heard uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic for the first time. I heard Nevermind for the first mm -hmm. time. Um, I heard Ministry, Psalm 69 for the first time. That was, like, super hard. Yeah. And, like, some of that yeah, I still I remember. I didn't really listen to that much, but I was into, like, more of, like, yeah, Guns N' Roses was, like, my number one uh, favorite at the time, and I yeah. still like them. They're kind of timeless. They, they never get old. I mean, I would always rediscover them every time I heard them again. Like, I, I never bought the tape because I would always hear it on the radio so much. And then back in the days of cassettes, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I dubbed this cassette of Appetite, and I realized, oh, my God, I listen to Appetite for Destruction all the time. <laughs> every time it came on the radio, I turned it up. I was like... Oh, wow. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, these are the but guys. Yeah, that's who I was into. Cinderella was another big one for me, which was kind of considered like hair metal, but... Yeah. No. I mean, they're almost like just a blues band <laughs> with like some kind of hard rock influence as well. I just think people don't realize that because the lead singer has like this screamy kind of voice. Well, I had no idea what they were or what they did. I had no idea what Cinderella was. Cinderella. That sounded weird. I have no idea what Cinderella was until I met you. And then I was like, I love this band. Yeah. But it was just like the labels that got put on things. When things were termed as metal, it was like, uh-oh, bad news. Yeah. You well, know? no, for real. Like, yeah, I mean, I lived in Mississippi, so, you know, I wasn't that far away from, like, Arkansas, West Memphis, where, like, the kids got, you know, jailed for murder. Well, I went to ninety percent of the reason why because they liked hard rock or like metal or dark music that people thought was satanic. So everybody thought, you know, what I listened to for music was satanic. Mm. Oh man, which is ridiculous because I'm about as far as from satanic as one can possibly be. Yeah, but I had a fully, you know, my wardrobe was fully made up of like black shirts, black pants, black boots. I wore, like, you know, black eyeliner. My hair was dyed, like, super white blonde. I looked, you know, somewhat corpsey. <laughs> and because of that, you know, everybody just assumed that I was worshipping the devil somewhere, which is ludicrous. But anyway. Well, the best part for me was, you know, I mean, I went to Catholic school, okay? So, like, you know, we heard all these things that were, you know, no, no, no. And we were like, okay, all right, we'll stay away from it. And then you would just, again, have these moments of absolute, just foolish rebellion. Like, we were at, like, a, a remainder bookstore, and they had the Satanic Bible for a dollar in paperback. And it was like, we got this thing, and there was, like, nothing really to it. It was just like... <laughs> 
a bunch of baloney and we we were just like what did we do this for and then we all kind of freaked out and we took we took like this metal bucket and we put it in the backyard and we threw our copies in there. And we just set them on fire. Oh, you know, we're oh. like, we're not doing this. He's not oh getting us, man. Oh. Well, and I also was introduced to Dungeons and Dragons by the most devout religious person that I knew. And I loved it. And because my parents knew the guy was really religious and he's the one that, that turned me on to it. He was a few years older. It was like, it was totally cool. So I was safe. But I loved Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I was like fully not allowed to play Dungeons and Dragons. What a drag. When I was growing up. And I would have loved it, but because I love like telling stories sure. and all this kind of stuff, I would have adored that. Yeah. But I don't even think you could play it in my state. Like there was so much uproar about it. Oh, yeah. Um, when I was growing up and people really freaked out. So my mom never would have let me play it. And yeah, I mean, I had trouble. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that my parents got divorced and I kind of ended up more being able to be on my own and do what I wanted, mm -hmm. I might not have been able to get into any of the music that I ended up liking with like the hard rock kind of stuff because my mom freaked out one time when I was probably like nine or ten. I was watching MTV yeah, and some Ozzy Osbourne video was on and he is like, standing there like singing in front of like this cross that's like <laughs> rotating upside down yeah and my mom like had an absolute shit fit freaked out you're never watching mtv again like she just lost it on me i wasn't allowed to watch mtv again which i was fine like two years later because she was working and i could do whatever i wanted to because i was at home by myself and I was like, look, if, you know, I have to watch my sisters and, like, cook dinner for us and, like, be a parent, then, that, you know, if I want to watch a, a heavy metal video, it's happening. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. <laughs>